So therefore, what is a guru about? When you get close to your guru, you get closer to yourself. Do you know why? Unlike other people who press your buttons, unlike other people who offend you and, and talk about sensitive issues with you, they usually don't have a method to help you overcome it. So it's like pressing a button again and again. Each time they press it, you have pain. When someone out of compassion, a teacher, hopefully, and who knows the method how to overcome that presses your button, it hurts just like anybody else pressing your button, but they, offer, they also offer you medication, the Dharma. I'll give you an example. If you broke your arm, if you broke your arm, and your friend comes and touches, go like that, it's painful, isn't it? If you go to a doctor, he touches, it's painful, isn't it? Well, one heals, one doesn't. Very simple. So what do you want? Do you want all your? Do you want to go to the doctor? He touches you. Ah! You bite the doctor. You go away. Kick him. Scream. Or you say, okay. And then a few months later, you're healed. You think? So when you go to a guru and he presses your buttons, he teases you. He talks to you. Don't ever assume. Don't ever assume your guru cannot see through you. Don't ever assume. You'll be making a very big mistake. Don't ever assume. Don't ever assume that your guru is limited. That your guru cannot see more than one or two or a group. Don't ever assume. Don't ever assume your lies and mind games and tricks and cover that worked on the outside work with your guru. Don't ever assume that. If you assume that, you push yourself away from the inner guru. You gotta open yourself up to somebody. Why not yourself? So when you go to a doctor and he touches you and you have pain, he'll examine what's wrong and then he'll put the right treatment. When you go to your friend and he touches your broken arm, you're gonna scream and have pain because after that it's the same thing. You go to your other friend, touch you, you go to another friend, touch you, then, then, then JP comes and licks you, ow. <laughs> JP's like some kind of female dog, licky licky. I got a better name, but we're on film. <laughs> yeah. But when you go to a doctor, there's a difference. So when the guru picks on you, teases you, or forces you, or makes you do things, you go, oh, I don't have time. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, I've got an appointment. <laughs> or I'm not ready for this. Honey, you're 105 years old. When are you going to be ready? And you make noises like going to the doctor and the doctor touches you, you, you say, cannot. Oh, I cannot. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want this needle. I don't want that. I want to put this. I don't want to take that one. Go home. Here, let me break your other arm. <laughs> Think. So when we go to a guru, what do you want? The guru cannot criticize you, cannot tell you you're wrong, cannot catch you in a bad mood, cannot catch you on the wrong day, wrong time of the month. The guru cannot say anything wrong to you. The guru always has to be perfect. He has to be your friend and he has to be a guru. So when he goes out yam chai with you, he's got to be a friend, joke, you don't want to be official, and he can this, cannot that, can this, can that. But when he's on the throne, he's got to be Buddha. You want your guru to be some kind of actor. What do you want? And then your guru, is you're just one complicated person. One. Cannot talk like that with you, cannot act like that with you, cannot this, cannot that, cannot pray to this, cannot meditate on that, cannot do this lineage, cannot do that. You have all these rules for your guru. Then on top of that, that's for one person. Then each person have their own hang-ups and baggage and their emotional crap. So the guru's got to switch around like chameleons. With this person, I'd be like that. Can all this? Oh, this one can. This one cannot. That can. That. By the time the end of the day, what do you think? You think about it. All the emotional crap you lay on your guru. Every single person is so different, but there's only one guru. One. So how come the guru can deal with so many people and you can't? Why? There must be some difference in the practice. That's another sign of your guru. There's a difference in their mind, their practice, their determination. They can deal with so many, so much pressure and problems for nothing, but you cannot. It shows you their qualities. So that one should encourage. You don't go, oh wow. Licky, licky, my guru. That's my theme tonight. All right, so that's our fear. That is our fear of the Dharma, that's a fear of our Guru. So when our Guru says something, we're afraid he's going to press on something that's very sensitive. And then we reject, we fight. And there are students who go away from the Gurus. There are students who actually go away from the Gurus because they told them something that they don't like. 
I had centers before. I had centers in Singapore. I had centers in Malaysia. I had a fallout with them. Why did I have a fallout with them? Sorry to say. Because they wanted to make me do things that I know was not correct. I don't want to go into details, but I know a lot of people here who know the details because they were with me. They used to shout at me and threaten me. Shout and physically threaten me. Physically. Physically threaten me. If I don't do this and this and this, they're going to wall up me. They used to tell me that. I said, huh? Yes, they physically threaten me. They're business people. So what am I? I I'm a cash cow. Oh, yes. I was physically threatened. So I said, never mind. Compassion. I consulted my guru what they said. I said, never mind. So I gave the center to them, gave everything back to them. Gave what, what was theirs? Give back. You can ask my older students. We don't talk about it, not because we're embarrassed. I don't want to embarrass them. I'm not embarrassed. I didn't do anything wrong. So people have that rumor, you know, oh, why, 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 why? And so they say things to cover. They say things to cover what's been done. They say things to cover what's, what is true and not true. They cover. Why do they cover? Because they're embarrassed. Some of them came back and apologized to me. Made offerings? Oh, yes. A big group, in fact. Came back and apologized, made offerings, said, we're sorry. I don't see them anymore because they're embarrassed, but they apologized. Some still like, oh, well, okay, whatever. <laughs> Many of the centers here, no, a few of the centers here, four, and a few of the centers in Singapore, two, was directly started by me or indirectly by me, they opened. Oh, yes, that I taught there. I put my people there. I started them off, and they met Ganden, the Lamas, through me. Six centers in this region were started directly by me and indirectly. That is history. If I tell you the name of the centers, you'll be shocked. You can ask my older students. Shocked. Oh, yes. And I'll open more, and I'll do more. But once they get big, they get good, they say, I don't know you anymore. Whatever. That's how lay people act. That's how lay people act. That's how people with Dharma, no Dharma act. So how do I react back to them? Never mind. They have a Dharma center. They're studying. They're doing practice. Do. No problem for me. Why no problem for me? When I die, I can't take the Dharma centers with me. What do you do? Burn them up and offer it to me with a chicken? <laughs> Keep your Dharma center. Lah. I'm not attached. Why am I not attached? No choice. They took it away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what to do? I have no choice but to not be attached because it was taken away. Someone snatches your purse away, you can't be attached. They took it away. See you later, purse. <laughs> First of all, so I'm trying, I'm trying to tell you, I'm Buddha, I'm not attached. No, I'm not a Buddha. I am attached, but they forced me not to be attached. Thank you very much. And I met people like that. And I'm not the only Lama. I'm not only Rinpoche. I've heard many cases because when we go back to the monastery, we talk. We talk. We keep it quiet because it's shameful. I'm not the only one. And some of these people, when they broke off from me, they broke off again, then they broke off again. Oh yes, nobody knows. So what's my point? You like politics? I wet your tongue. And that's why I'm controversial. Why am I controversial? Because I bring Dharma to the people according to their way. So a lot of conservative people, straight edge people, people who think if they have rules and stuff, they don't accept. It's okay. My monastery accepts me. My guru accepts me. My abbot accepts me. And the Buddha accepts me. So if you don't accept me, <laughs> it's all right. No problemo. Because you don't matter, they do. <gasps> Rude. Well, I'm going to listen to people who've been in rows for 50, 60 years, who are shaved and bald and are man who have manners, who practice Dharma, do retreats, and they're high lamas. And they're happy with me, I'm going to listen to them. I'm not going to listen to a bunch of freaks, a uh, bunch of lay people, a bunch of people who don't practice Dharma, don't know anything, criticize and talk and be hurt by that. No. I used to be 20 years ago, 10 years ago. All right, all right, five years ago. Not anymore because I've moved on. I've moved on. I've, I've grown from the pain. I've learned from the hurt. I've explored and expanded beyond my limitations. <laughs> Don't you hate all that therapy crap? Oh, you're here to find yourself. Oh, geez, they walk out of there in a dress. I'm like, that's yourself? <laughs> so, if we have these fears, if we have these fears, my friends, that's what's causing your anger. The lack of effort, the lack of study, the lack of practice, the lack of enthusiasm, your inconsistency, you know how much of that you have. And because of that, you didn't achieve maybe this or that or what you wanted to achieve. So you're hiding that. 
And therefore, when people say things or do things, whatever, it makes you feel low, not respected, down, away. Um, you, you don't feel like you have attention. Why? It's not them doing that to you. It's yourself knowing what you have not done. And that's the truth. So when you go to a guru and he explains these things or teases you or scolds you or tells you off or does things or to, to help you and you reject and you fight and you run away, you have to expect more pain. Do you know why? It's not the guru or people. It's because your pain will get bigger with time. With time, your pain gets bigger because your body ages, your mind ages, your chances go, you will, you will have more and more problems. Why? It's you. It is you. Therefore, we have to transform. It is never too late to transform. Do you know why it's never too late? Don't look at, don't look at your existence in one lifetime. Don't look at your existence in one lifetime. Don't. Look at it in many streams of lifetimes. So go to, your, go to your guru doctor who will set your arm back in right. How do you know your guru has compassion? By how much he teaches you. How do you know your guru has love? by how much he repeats himself the same teachings again and again to you. How do you know your guru is skillful? Because a guru comes down to your level, eats and drinks and helps and teaches you and plays with you and teases and cajoles you to practice the Dharma. How do you know your guru is kind and generous? Because the guru is always trying to give things to you, not get things. How do you know your guru has perseverance and endurance? Because he never gives up on you. So when you find such a being, you call them your guru because that person will help you find the same qualities inside of you that we all have. That's what a guru is all about, is finding those inner qualities that we all have. See, the guru is not pointing to, find, to, is not pointing to something that you don't have. He's pointing to something that you have. How kind is my Lord Guru, who patiently teaches me, who guides me, who takes care of me and I give nothing or very little in return. What can I give my guru in return? Expose are my internal fears. Expose and revealing my internal pains. Expose and re re revealing my inner fears. Because why? You've lived with fears and pain for so many years. It won't get better. Why? As it goes on, it accumulates more more and more if you have a dirty shirt you don't wash it it's going to get dirtier and dirtier one day two day three day if you have bad speech you don't control it now it's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse if you make enemies with your speech it's going to the enemies will grow more why because your speech hurts everybody so wherever you go whatever you do you will create more enemies with your speech that's why if we don't control our speech the sufferings will get more so if we have one or two people hating us or talking back to us or showing us a black face or avoiding us and don't like us, expect four, expect six, expect eight, expect ten. Why? Why? Because nobody likes that. So we have to change. Why is it never too late? Better to have eight people that hate us instead of 16. Better to have 16 people that hate us instead of 30 or 40 or 50 or 100. That's why. You say, oh, yeah, add it to the list. Don't be so stupid. Don't use that as a cover. Oh, definitely. Definitely. It's very, very important. So therefore, rely on the message, not the personality of the teacher. Listen to what the teacher is telling you. Listen to the Dharma that he's giving you. Listen to it, not his personality. I'll tell you why. Very simple. Your teacher will die. Your teacher will not be with you forever. And even before your teacher dies, he cannot be with you 24 hours a day holding your hands. So you need to listen to the words. Rely on the meaning, not just the words. The words sound nice. The words sound great and it's beautiful. You write it down and put it in your notes and you, you email it to your friends or whatever. But you need to listen to the meaning. The meaning is, are you doing it? Are you doing it? Rely on the meaning and not the provi provisional ones. What does provisional mean? Anybody know what provisional means? David? Can we use a, a simpler word? I'm not so educated. Huh? Rely on the meaning and not the ordinary one? Very good. 
Don't look at the superficial meaning, as I s described with the Dalai Lama. Look at the real meaning deep inside of the teachings. Don't look at superficial, can, cannot. Rely on wisdom and not your judgmental mind. That's very clear. So when we accept the Guru, when we accept the teacher, when we accept the Dharma, do you know what you're accepting? You're accepting yourself. And when you listen and you respect the teacher, you're respecting yourself. Why? What the teacher tells you and you do, you will achieve those qualities. Therefore, you respect yourself. If you fight against your teacher and don't do what your teacher tells you, you fight against yourself. Because what is the teacher telling you? The teacher may use many methods and tactics and ways to tame you and to, and to help you to control yourself. Help you. Many ways. If every instruction that a teacher gives you and every kind of method or any kind of practice a teacher gives you always makes excuses not to do it or reject it or stop it or fail or again not do it, then you reject yourself. Why? Overcoming your anger and greed and, and, and hatred and jealousy, how does it benefit the teacher? You say, oh yeah, well, if, 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 if they overcome that, the center grows and get more money. Heck, I don't need a center to make money. I can open a business to make more money. Much more money. Why open a center and make money? Trust me, you don't make money. No. You want to make money? Do business. I tell you, the Dharma business, you don't make money. You suffer. You suffer, you don't make anything. I'm still trying to get rich. You don't make money. And if you're in it to make money, either you're stupid or you're a loser. You don't have any other way. Okay, I'm both. But I'm not making any money, so I'm still losing out. Look at me. I get rid of all this stuff. Get out of this country. Go somewhere and nobody knows me. Don't you think I can do business? Don't you think I can make money? Don't you think I can do other things? <laughs> than just sit on the throne and entertain a bunch of clowns with, other, with big clown here? Don't you think I can do other things? Don't you think I have other ways to make money? That's right. I don't need to make money. Some people say, hey, Rimchi's greedy. I am greedy. Give me money. I'll show you where I send it. I'll show you what I do with it. I'll show you. Mother Teresa is greedy too. She always say, give me this, give me that, give me the land, give me this, give me that, give me she, Read her book. She's always like, give me, give me, give me. That's her mentra. And what did she do with it? Look at Reverend Cheng in Taiwan. She's filthy, filthy rich. She doesn't use one dime for herself. She uses for everybody. Yeah, I want money. I am greedy. Give me money, 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 money. You give me money, I love you. Why? I help you to give, and you help many people who receive. But for myself, no. It's very rare. I ask things for myself, very rare. Unless I'm desperate. Even then, it's not for myself, usually. Very rare. Why, is it, why am I so good? Because I have a firm belief I don't need to use religion to make money. I have that firm belief. And everybody think op op opposite or contrary, it doesn't matter, it doesn't bother me. Whatever I do, people are going to like me, don't like me, like, don't like, whatever. No problem. Some people like me, they don't like me. Then they don't like me, they like me again. Mm, whatever. <laughs>